If you ask me, 2022 was one of the best, if not the best year for beat'em ups ever. Yes, it would grant hours of heated discussion and debates over nostalgia versus objectivity when compared to 1993 or 1994, but if not the best, at least the third best. We had, looking again at my notes, 29 games last year. A huge amount for a genre that is, in the best case possible, very niche. But niche or not, the games are coming and not just games, I mean great games. That's why I decided to make a list with my top 5 games of 2022. Emphasis on my, this is in no way a definitive list, this is just a list with my most played beaten ups last year. But yeah, I already talked too much. Greetings, I am Savino, and this is The Flying Kick. Let's start this list with a mixed genre game. The Last Friend, which I believe many of you didn't even know about, mixes beaten up combat with tower defense. Yes, yes, I know a lot of people turn their faces for tower defense games, but hear me out. Here, you are Alpha, a guy who loves dogs, and honestly, who doesn't, that jumps into action after the dogos of the world start to disappear. Yes, the story isn't the strong suit of the game, but the motivation is enough for me. Someone is stealing dogs and harming them? Dude, this is the evilest plot to ever appear in a beaten up. Who cares about kidnapped girlfriends and city under controls of evil guys when you have someone kidnapping poor doggos? But in all seriousness, the game is pretty good. The tower defense gameplay involves you protecting your van that you use to rescue the poor doggos, and you have here your traditional mechanics where you start with a handful of currents to lay down some basic defenses, and you will get more of it as you defeat your enemies. But here, you are part of this defense, jumping through the lanes a la Guardian Heroes while beating the heck out of your enemies. The game is simple, the combat is a little limited in what you can do to your enemies, is meaning no complex juggles or anything, but the loop is extremely fun. But I have to say here that playing alone was fun, but not that much for me. But when me and my son played it together, my dudes, this game is awesome. We had a blast screaming and jumping in my living room trying to protect our van from the endless hordes of countless enemies attacking us in the later levels. I guess we beat this game 4 times by now and every now and then we jump into this game to save more dogos. It's a heck of a good time. To be completely honest with you guys, I was never truly a mobile gamer. I'm not a fan of touch controls and games that support any physical controllers are pretty uncommon on mobile. That changed when Maximus 2 released in April last year. The game hooked me from the first moment with its charming graphics and silly humor. The gameplay is also very good and pretty responsive no matter if you're using touch or physical controllers and from what I tested, any controller goes. I used my 8-bit DOE controller and my arcade stick and both were detected without any problem. The soundtrack of Maximus 2 is also amazing, lots of interesting compositions from classic to electronic while the background pays homage to a lot of classic games. The game also offers 8 playable characters, were 6 at launch, which shows how committed those guys are with the game, and not only characters were added since launch, 5 extra levels were also added to the original 10. More than that, the game was free with an extremely fair monetization system that I really appreciated, especially when you see games charging 100 bucks for some virtual coins. Local co-op for 4 players, which is the standard nowadays, and online multiplayer also for 4 players, which isn't very common, especially for games with a lower budget. With all these qualities, it's hard for a game to beat Maximus 2. The only reason I didn't play this game more, it's because it was only available on my phone. But something tells me things will be different this year, since the game is now on the Switch and Steam. Let's see. I will be honest with you guys and say that Brock, 
did impress me when I first saw the trailer. Yes, yes, I like click and point games, but they were something that I had some nostalgia for and not something that I was actively looking for. But since it was also a bit an up, I jumped to Steam and downloaded the prologue. <laughs> After playing the demo, I was hooked. The story was very intriguing and the voice acting, especially Brock's voice actor, were amazing. But what really got me into this game was the combat. Solid, satisfying, extremely methodical, the combat in this game is very, very unique. Brock is heavy and you can feel it in every punch he gives and every punch he takes. Brock is a unique experience. I could have spent more time with it if there was a beaten up mode only, because unfortunately I don't have the time to chase all the 13 endings in this huge game. But this is not the game's fault, this is my bad management of time, if I'm being honest. I can't recommend Brock enough for its amazing combat and compelling story. The game will be out this year for consoles and I'm buying a Switch copy as soon as I can because, yeah, I need to see the other endings and play a bit more with my favorite croc. This one was love at first sight. First time I saw the trailer for Final Vendetta, I knew it would be good. But I was wrong, dead wrong. Final Vendetta is not only good, it's amazing. The game has an old school vibe mixed with modern flares that's perfect for my weird taste. And although I heard some people complaining about the graphics because it is a copy of SNK style, I simply love the way the game looks. And sure, I love how the game plays, Final Vendetta gameplay is simple and fantastic. You can do a lot with only a few buttons. The playable characters are also pretty cool to play with and they feel very different from each other. Claire, Duke and Miller are great characters and they were created to appeal to every type of player. Now let's talk about the soundtrack a little bit. If you follow me here, you know that the soundtrack is the second most important thing for me in a bit and up and my friends, the soundtrack of this game is pure fire. Take a listen, take a listen to the first thing you will listen in this game. Is it or is it not the best thing you ever heard? The OST here hooked me up from the first second to the final credits. This is how music for beaten ups should be. This game only wasn't my most played game on the year because the campaign is a little short. After mastering Claire and Duke and being massacred trying to play with Miller, I had nothing else to do in the game. Again, this is not the game's fault, the fault is mine for being so avid with this one, but my second most played game this year and I don't regret a single second. Finally my most played game this year, which happens to be my favorite beaten up to. Dawn of the Monster is a very unique game, not only by its theme, which is unique in the genre, King of the Monsters doesn't count, but also for its impressive combat. No, serious, have you played this one? The game is incredible, extremely technical, fast and heavy. It was an amazing feat to create a combat that feels heavy and does not feel sluggish or slow. Your characters, even the slower ones, move quickly across the screen destroying everything in their path. It is pretty fun to completely floor a city after a battle with other kaijus. Another thing that is awesome in this game is the grade system. Here you can go from E to S+, and you want to reach that S+, to get the best perks and upgrades for your character, but to achieve this you will need to be extremely fast or you will lose your chain and that sweet, sweet S+, will be gone for good. 
This is a game that will keep you on your toes all the time if you're aiming for the best results. And there's also the story that even for someone like me who isn't truly a fan of the Tokusatsu gender, was very fun and compelling with lovely characters, some funny exchange between them and sure, a good plot twist in the end because that's how those stories of monsters and evil companies should go. Dawn of the Monsters will be updated this year with another playable character that was chosen by popular vote, Meteor Demujin, a Super Sentai character that is already my favorite. I'm sorry, Tempest. This is an amazing game which I have more than 100 hours by now and I won't stop playing it because every time I play this game I find new combos and new ways to explode my enemies into thousands of blue flash pieces. If you haven't played it, you really should. Actually, you really should play all the games in this list, they are all awesome. And you, I'm pretty sure you also have a list with your most played game this year, so why don't share it with us down in the comments. And what do you think about my list? Did you play any of those games? Tomorrow I will be posting a short video about Konami's Vendetta, talking about why I think the game is so good and honestly one of my favorites at the arcade since I first saw it. And also we will have a review for Scrap Riders. Microids unfortunately didn't send me the key, so it will be up by the end of the week and not that release date. So I will buy the game on release day so you don't have to and I will let you know if the game worth the 20 bucks ask. And I will make a video about these two books here in case you're interested. See you all tomorrow, I hope you guys have an awesome day and remember, keep it up.